The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke this to his disciples. As the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what day the Lord is coming. Understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, waiting. Most of us don't like waiting, do we? I got a good dose of it this past week. I flew on Tuesday to Houston to be with my wife's family for Thanksgiving and came back on Friday. Now let me tell you, when you go to Houston, you do a lot of waiting. It's now the fourth largest city behind New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. And I was born and raised in New York. I worked in Chicago. I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. They don't hold a candle to Houston when it comes to waiting in traffic. Frustrating, full of anxiety, and not just a little bit of anger, a lot of it. And given this week at the airports, because of all who are traveling, the security lines were long and difficult. But if ever there was a sign and symbol in my life of the challenge of waiting, it was at Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx. Now, on the rare occasion that I got into trouble, <laughs> you had to go to JUG. I don't know why Catholic high schools call it JUG, but they do. It's detention. It's an hour and a half after school. At Cardinal Hayes, what we had was a JUG room, a classroom, and around the edges were big white face clocks with sweep second hands. And we had to stand and watch that clock for an hour and a half. I tell you, it was painful. And our prefect of discipline used to wear leather shoes, leather-soled shoes. You could hear, hear him pacing in the hallway. And you never knew when he was going to come in and make sure you were still standing and that your eyes were open and you were watching that clock. Now, that's a certain kind of waiting, but there's another kind, and I'll give you an example. Well, that, of course, is what we feel like when we're waiting. It feels like we are going to be there until we die. But there, this other kind of waiting is uplifting. It's joyful. The example I give you here is a tradition my wife and I started several years ago in immediately following the 11 o'clock Mass on Christmas Day, we get in our car, and we drive to Door County, and we go to this beautiful bed and breakfast. And when we arrive there, we go in and get our key, and we go to our room, and the first thing we do is light a nice fire. We then open our bag of treats, and we bring out crackers and cheese and fruit, a bottle of wine, some good books. We get into our flannel pajamas. Yes, I have a pair of Dr. Denton's. 
I'll send a picture to you sometime. But we there disconnect, and we, we contemplate the joy of Christmas. Christ among us, Emmanuel, Christ come, Christ made flesh. And in that quiet time of four days, we reflect and we take all of that in. Believe me, in days and weeks and even months ahead, because we have to book usually the end of summer, we look at that time in joyful waiting. The church, in her wisdom, purposely puts Advent at the beginning of the liturgical year. Today, actually last night at sunset, Advent began. And the church does this because we put this Advent, this time of waiting, according to Webster's, it's a time period when we're waiting for an event or the coming of a special person. The church puts Advent at the beginning to give us something, for, something to look forward to, something full of life, something full of light. And of course, that is Christ, is it not? And so we here today begin four weeks of this very special time reflecting on that joyful anticipation, the good kind of waiting. If ever there were a symbol of joyful anticipation, it would be the pregnant Mary. But those of you here today from Good Shepherd, you know in our narthex, in our lobby, we have that beautiful statue of Mary, Father John Burns from St. Mary's has been here several times, and he tells me that that is his favorite statue of Mary. The pastor of St. Mary's wants our statue. <laughs> because it's that. It's that symbol of anticipation. It's Mary pregnant with hope and the fulfillment of Christ coming into our lives and in the world. So that would be a good symbol of what is to come. What's going to happen when Christ comes again? Let us turn again to that beautiful first reading from Isaiah that was so well proclaimed today. Thank you. Let us listen again to these words, because here is why we wait in joyful anticipation. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, one nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. Now, I'm not trying to get political here, but that is the ultimate gun control, because we wouldn't want them. There wouldn't be a law restricting them. There would be no need for them. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of life I'm looking forward to. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As, as it is in heaven. That is what I anxiously await. We heard in Paul's letter to the Romans, and again in the Gospel, that we have to be ready, because we don't know when that time of Christ's second coming will be here. But as far as I'm concerned, the time of peace, the time of tranquility, the time of no arguing and no dissent and no tears. The time of the lion laying with the lamb. I'm ready for that. Are you? Yes. In this silent time then now, until Father stands again, let us anticipate that. Let us focus on the joy and the light and the life that is to come.